right, let's see how we look over here. All right, so we're live on Instagram, we're live on Facebook. Go ahead and show how pretty we look. There we are. Look at us. Like John would say, look at me. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys, so today we're going to talk about how to, how to communicate with for sale by owners, and I hope I'm in the picture on this Instagram thing because we don't have a cameraman this morning. Okay. So, we have a bigger office. All right, so <clears throat> we're going to talk about how is it that we can get some for sale by owner listings? How can we communicate with them? Alejandra's going to start doing some for sale by owner prospecting this year. It's one of her um, target audiences. So today we're going to role play. We're going to do a lot of dialogue. And we'll first, um, before we do any of that, we're going to figure out what the psychology is behind for sale by owners. Yeah. So uh, for those of you watching on Instagram right now, um, you're not seeing our screen. We're doing a screen share on Facebook. On Facebook, you're going to see that I have up um, a uh, training that we did maybe about a year ago with uh, Tom, our dialogue trainer. And uh, he broke it down for us that with for sale by owners, there is a uh, process and there's a, a way of thinking that a for sale by owner uh, uses. There's three stages. He calls them the stages of FISBOism. The first stage with FISBOs is uh, the stage where the owner of the house does not want to cooperate with anyone. They think they got it all taken care of. They know the pricing of the home. They don't want to deal with any agents. You call them, they hang up on you. That's the first stage of FISBOism. The second stage of FISBOism is when they've realized that it's not as easy as they think, and now they want to start cooperating with agents, so they start offering um, small percentages, maybe 2%, 2.5%. You bring me a buyer, I'll cooperate with you, right? That might be maybe a month in after they try to sell it by themselves. And then the final stage of the FISBOism is when the uh, owner of the house says, you know what, I give up, somebody help me, and I'm willing to you know, list with the right broker, with the right agent. So what happens is when you first start your, your, um, your conversations with them, they might be brand new, you might be catching them at the wrong time. If you're catching them at the wrong time, all that means is that they're just not ready yet. You know, it's just you got to keep following up with them. You got to show them that, you know, they could be rude and grumpy today, but, you know, give them a couple of weeks, their whole tone and demeanor might change. And then they see that you're being persistent. They're like, wow, this person might really be good. You know, they, they seem to really serious about their, uh, their craft. So they'll maybe give you an opportunity. But once you do get that opportunity, once you do get, uh, you know, some time to talk with them, whether that is on the phone or whether that's in person, what do you say to them? Right. So today we're going to talk about what to say that's for sale by owners. Right. And I'm a big fan of um, scripting your introduction and not scripting your whole dialogue. The scripting your whole dialogue is not going to sound real. You're not going to sound like the person you really are. So what I feel that you should be doing as a um, <clears throat> as a uh, as an agent is uh, just write down some things. Just write down things that work for you. Write down questions and things that people say to you that you didn't have the right answer for at that time. And you just study that and just go over that as many times as possible with a colleague when you're doing role play and just nail it, nail it, nail it every time. And then before you know it, when you go back to these people, you're going to be able to, you know, talk up a storm. You're going to be able to win them over. You're going to be able to get the right uh, answers out of them. So right now, have you ever contacted a FISBO before? No. Never. Okay. What are you expecting from a FISBO? Um, no, well, normally I would say they will probably not want to work with an agent. They mm -hmm. want to save money. Yeah. Um, and just... Probably a no. Yeah, Maybe. you hear a lot of Close that. Closed door. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, so <clears throat> what I suggest is that when somebody brings up money, right, you easily can bring up the statistics. We all know them, right? We, I mean, we, we they change every year, but uh, we just recently looked up right before this, uh, right before we started, uh, that the 2017, now we, the 2018 statistics, I think, will be out soon. The 2017 statistics stated that across the country, on average, a for sale by owner sold for 200000 200000 yeah. and 265 with an agent. 265 with an agent. So that's an incredible, huge percentage. And that's not our numbers. These are real numbers that are calculated every year with the National Association of Realtors. 7% of um, the population has chosen to go for sale by owner, you know, for whatever reason that is. Uh, so what that means that it, what that means is that 93% of the homes that are sold are sold with a real estate agent. So why would the seller want to sell to only 7% of the population, right? If you think about it, 7% of the market. So it makes all the sense in the world. I, I buy and sell homes, and I don't sell them for a 
you know, I pay the commission. I do everything that, because I know that's part of doing business. And some people may say, well, I, I, can, I know I can save that amount. They're not saving anything. They're paying more. Even if they gave you a 10% commission, they'd still be way ahead. Right? Think about it. So right now we're going to do some role play. We're going to do some, so, and the first one's going to be rough. I know it's going to be rough. And I'm going to hit you with some typical for sale by owner jargon. And uh, I want to see how you react. Now, did you happen to bring um, uh, a notebook or anything? Because yes. Or good. So uh, after we're done with our video, you can write down anything that you felt was good, anything you felt was bad, and anything that you feel like you should have said, you write them down and keep some notes. Okay? Great. So first you're going to call me, and I'm going to answer. I'm going to be the, the homeowner who thinks he knows it all. And for sale by owner, just fresh on the market for one week. So you're calling, you see the sign on the lawn, and I'm here. So I say, hello. Hi, this is Lewis. This is Lewis. How can I help you? Hey, Lewis. This is Alejandro from Culture State. Mm -hmm. um, and don't worry about it. I'm not trying to make you list with me. I'm um, actually want to help you. And um, now you can smile and <laughs> oh, See, I love that introduction. That was great. Okay, so thank you. I've been getting calls all day but from I nobody bet. but agents. I bet. Yeah. The, um, I guess right there. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. So, well, how can I help you, Alejandro? Well, I wanted to ask you, is the property that you have for sale still in the market? Are you still trying to sell it? Yes, it is. It's still yes. in the market. Okay, still asking um, three ninety nine. I think I saw it. Yeah, it's three ninety nine. We have it on Zillow. We have it on for sale owner .com. We have it pretty much everywhere. Three bedrooms, two baths? Yes, that's it. Gotcha. So, um, this is what I have to Okay. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> okay, good. All right, so you're stuck there, right? Yes. Um, all right. A lot of the, in, in the inter if the person is new, brand new on the market, mm -hmm. you want to gauge them. You want to ask them, so how's it gone so far? How, how has the uh, first sale owner process gone? You know, have you gotten any interested parties? Something like that. Just start asking them questions, 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 because the more you can pass the ball to their side of the court and let them talk, they will tell you everything you want to hear. They'll tell you everything you'll ever need to know. And then what will happen is that you'll give you ammunition for you to come back and use their, their pain points. You know what I'm saying? Because they're going to tell you, reveal something as they talk. So, Alejandra, well, if you were the for sale owner, I would say to you, uh, hello, uh, Mr. or Mrs. or for sale owner, like, uh, is your home still on the market? Great question. Yes, it is. It's still on the market. Okay, cool. Uh, I see by the pictures, like, I'll, I'll continue where you left off by the pictures on the on Zillow, I see that it's a three bedroom, two bath. It's a really beautiful home. Have you accepted any, um, any anyone made an offer? Has it come close to making any offers? You know, has your experience been so far? And the person might say, well, no, nothing yet, but we're doing an open house this weekend. My wife and I, we're staging it. We're making it look really nice, really pretty. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Uh, do you have any experience with selling homes before, or is this your first time? First time. Okay, first time. Very good. That's good. Uh, do you um, do you know like all the qualifications that a buyer should go through before you know accepting an offer? Not really. Okay. Are you pre-qualifying people before they come to your house, or are you just doing it uh, if they accept an offer, if you, if you present an offer, or if they present an offer to you? Um, I'm just like trying to save some money at this point because mm -hmm. I actually had an agent before, and I feel like he didn't really do a good job. To be honest, I had a lot of people coming in and giving mm -hmm. out feedback, no okay. no offers. Yeah. And so I figure if he could do that, I could definitely do this, like probably better. Yeah, well, you probably have more interest in selling the property than uh, Asia probably did if he never gave you any feedback and you know he wasn't attentive to your needs. But I'll tell you right now, that's not how we work. And that's a that's a Tom line. So that's not how we work. And that's actually actually exactly how we don't work. We don't do these things to our clients as you as you can see by all our reviews on Zillow that our clients are very satisfied with our with our services. We have over hundred reviews and you can check them out and, and, and see for yourself. But what I'm telling you is that um, I know it's gonna be a pretty tough process selling the home by yourself. And I just wanna let you know and I'm sure you're probably aware that there are statistics out there that show that Selling your home for sale by owner, you're going to um, end up losing a lot more money than if you were to list it with a broker. You you think you may be saving the commission, but on average, a, a homeowner can lose up to six dollar transaction by not using an agent. It's a lot of money, absolutely. And your home price at three ninety nine, even if you offered out a five percent commission, you're way ahead of the game. You're you know you're you're definitely going to be in a position to make uh, more money if you get your home marketed correctly. So I understand your home wasn't done right, and I'll be honest with you, a lot of it sometimes has to do with the price. So I, I would love to see if maybe that's the reason why it didn't sell. Was it listed for three ninety nine when you had it with the agent? Yes, actually. Okay. I have in a few websites already, so mm -hmm. I think that the 
that should sure. work out. Out of every 10 phone calls that you get, how many of them are agents? All of them. All of them. <laughs> yes, because that's what's going to continue happening. I'll be honest with you, the, the only people you're marketing to by putting in on Zillow and for sale by owner are agents. 93% um, of the home buyers out there are working with real estate agents. And if somebody's qualified to buy your home, most likely they're working. You know, they're, they're probably a working couple and they don't really have time to be scouring the internet for homes. Meanwhile, real estate agents they're working with are looking for homes to sell them. Uh, and even if you offered out a commission to a buyer's agent, a lot of times a, buyer, uh, a buyer's agent won't bring a, a homeowner to your home for the fear that they might go around their back and go directly to you. So I'm sure you can understand that. Um, I do understand. I mean, I do, um, I am open to pay you if you bring me a buyer. Exactly. Yeah, and the, the um, commission that you would pay out would be how much? 2%. 2%. Okay. So if you pay out a 2% commission, meanwhile, um, everyone else on the market is paying out 25 and 3 you see that the um, incentive to bring someone to your home wouldn't be as high. W would you agree with me if I told you that the more commission an agent gets, the more likely you are to get more offers? Sure. Yeah, so the way that works is that I'm sure you know with your previous agent that if there's a 5% or 6% commission that's paid um, to the agency, we split that half and half. So if the majority of the homes on the market are getting two and a half and three, right? Imagine if you offered out three and a half or 4% to a buyer's agent and we kept it at 6%. We kept two and a half, we paid out three and a half. Imagine how many more agents would come to your office, I mean, come to your home and see it because their incentive is, is very high. You may not even have to lower your price if I if I take a look at your home and I feel like it's priced correctly. It maybe just needs more incentive, it needs better marketing. And you know, obviously when we take a listing, we don't just list it, put a sign up and that's it, we forget about it. We're the number one real estate company in New Jersey for social media. So we'll take this property and we'll make sure that it gets in front of every person that's qualified to buy a home who's in the market to buy a home. Okay. So you are so you will be able to like show me this because I like I mean you could say anything. All agents are the same Absolutely. thing, you know, they're mm -hmm. home. The best. Hey, listen. I would like to see that. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Hey, listen, we, we don't say anything we can't back up with statistics and facts. So I'd love to come over and meet with you this weekend if it's possible, if you're not too busy, and we'll show you exactly what you need to see. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear because that's not what we do. You know, a lot of agents out there will tell you, yes, you can get this for your house, yes, you can get that. We're going to show you exactly the, the facts you need to see. How's that sound? Sounds okay. I, yeah, mm -hmm. I guess it sounds good. <laughs> I mean, we can talk. Mm -hmm. Great. I'm not guaranteeing you that, you know. That's all I ask for because I, you don't know me. And obviously, if I didn't know someone either, I'm not going to tell them I'm going to work with them. Let me come over. I can show you what I can do for you and hopefully earn your business. Sure. Sounds good? Sounds good. Right. See you Saturday at 12. Okay. The whole, the whole time during our conversation, you have to sound very confident in what you are trying to get across, all your points. So the only way that's going to happen is by repetition, 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 repetition. Yeah, exactly, because there is a there is a chess game going on on the phone, you against me, and I got to think two steps ahead, and I'm always going to have to like listen to what you say, try to pull that info, and then use that info against you. You know, so if I really got into a, a longer conversation with you, I might be finding out that the reason why you're moving is because you want to buy a house in Florida to retire because your kids are out, and I might start using that as kind of like you know my my way in. You know, so let's try it again. This time, I'll be the homeowner. You be this. You be the agent. Try to get information out of me. Try to, you know, try to ask the right questions and try to then close at the end um, with uh, assuming the close. You know, just saying, listen, I'm, I'm going to be in your area. I'd love to stop by and show you exactly what you need to see. So it has about 12 o'clock. Like, don't even ask permission. Just, just put out a time that you're going to be there. Mm -hmm. All right. So hello. Hi, this is Louis. This is Louis. I can help you. Hi, this is Alejandra. Um, I see that you have a sign outside. Uh, you still, I, I, I also saw that you had this or listed before. Mm -hmm. You had a listed with an agent, and what happened? Uh, I'm sorry, Alejandra, where are you calling me from? Oh, uh, Culture oh. State. Okay. Culture State. All right. And, and don't uh, worry, I'm not trying to force you into like <laughs> listening with me, so you can like just smile, like we can just have a quick conversation, just have a couple questions if you don't mind. Okay. Well, I'm a little busy right now. Do you? Would you mind if I give you a call back? Uh, sure, I just like we have two minutes like, right now. All right, yeah, let's make it quick. I gotta get back to it. Sure, so let me ask you something. You you had a listing before, and what exactly happened with the other agent? Why it didn't sell? Well, the other agent, uh, you know what, it was a family friend, and I just I thought that I'd get more attention than I really did. I didn't, hardly did any open houses. The feedback was terrible, I, and I just feel like you know the guy wasn't doing his job. He wasn't serious. He's a part time agent, so maybe that has a lot to do with it. 
Yes, I mean, definitely. We, uh, I'm a full time agent, like this is how I do. Um, I love what I do. So, we're actually, I come from an agency that we're the largest we're in, the, in our city, like the, one of the best in the social media marketing and Facebook and like in general social media marketing. Um, but let me ask you something if they would uh, sell when you had it in the market, like what, what were you planning to do? Like, what were you well, we're hoping to sell it and uh, scale down because we have uh, our kids are out of the house, so we just think maybe a uh, so small ranch nest. or yeah, or maybe a condo somewhere, maybe down the shore. You have something thinking. in mind already? Not yet. We're just trying to make sure we have a buyer for this place yet. We looked at stuff online, but you know, the stuff goes fast. It does. Mm -hmm. It does. So mm -hmm. that's why this is one of the reasons why I was calling you. So let me ask you if I'm if I'm able to, let's say, bring a potential buyer to your property, uh, would you be willing to pay a commission to a real estate agent? Um, we, we've thought about that. I, mean, I think we would. We you would offer that a commission to an agent as long as the numbers are right. Gotcha. So, I mean, obviously, if we bring um, someone to you, um, I would need to view the property first because I want to send one of my clients um, sure. for something that I don't know how it looks. Mm -hmm. um, would you be available, let's say, Tomorrow, I'm actually passing by. Tomorrow, I have another appointment at 2 p.m. Well, I'll save you the trip. We are we have the pictures online. You can check them out on Zillow, or I can email them to you. I mean, pictures. Uh, I I actually like to see if you know if you, if I like the property for my clients, so I know exactly what they like mm -hmm. and what they're looking for. Sure. Um, it's a different feeling, you know, just seeing pictures and like mm -hmm. actually see the property and see how much I, I would like to. Work with you. I'm just warning you right now, Land, I'm not listing with anyone. So if you want to come over and try to get me to list, that's not going to happen. If you ah, that's perfectly fine. Give me like a quick tour, 10 minutes of your time. I could actually bring you a, like 10 different websites so you mm -hmm. could list your property there. Mm -hmm. and if you don't mind, can we see you tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. don't ask. Don't, don't ask. ask. Don't ask. <laughs> give all the value in the world and then say, I'll be there to give it. So you know, like when you when you just said that part, yeah, that part was great. But listen, uh, Mr. Salad, not only you know will I be able to see the home, so I can you know tell my clients about it, but I'll bring you more information for you to be able to sell this home on your own properly in the event that I can't find you a buyer. So I'll be buyer around twelve o'clock. Okay, I'll see you soon. Does okay. that works? Okay, good. Something like that. You know, can be more confident in the fact that you already kind of asked for the appointment. Now you're taking the appointment. Get it? Yeah, so we re rewind, rewind that part. So why do you want to come over, Alanda? The pictures are online. I don't think you need to see it. And I'm not signing with an agent, so you know I just don't want to waste your time. I definitely appreciate your, mm -hmm. you know, your um, your point of view. Uh, but I, I, I'm a visual person, but at the same time, I want to see it to be able to bring one of my clients or send my clients to you. Sure. Um, I mean, besides like coming and seeing, it's only going to be like ten minutes. Mm -hmm. But I would like to bring you maybe like. 10 different websites that you could also list it on. And, you know, if you if I can um, bring your buyer, I would like you to, you know, obviously make the most money you can make mm -hmm. on this property. Sure. And that's great. I mean, I, I think that's a great idea. But um, tomorrow I'll be there around 12. See you at 12 with that. <laughs> don't be like, oh. <laughs> You had it. You had it. You just like, right. Don't ask for permission. So After you say tomorrow. it, you just be quiet. Because if you start talking afterwards, then I'll be like, ah, I don't know about you. You look too bushy. <laughs> so let's uh, let's run back the ending again, and I'm going to give you uh, an, an easy close, so that way you can remember it and just say. So, um, Mr. Seller, I, you know, I understand. You know, you, you don't want to list with anyone, and I appreciate that. I wouldn't want to list with someone that I didn't know either. Uh, my intention is to come over just to preview the home because I don't want to keep dragging my clients out to see homes because they're going to get frustrated after a while. They're going to get burnt down. I just want to come see the home, and if it works for my clients, then I'll bring someone back. But in the event that I can't, I'm going to leave you with some information for you to be able to utilize, so you can sell your home on your own more efficiently. Okay. So I have an op I have an opening around 12 o'clock tomorrow after my my 11 appointment. So I'll just swing by and I'll give you the information then. Okay. That's it. You just be quiet, and they pretend the guys in front of you just look at that wall and just be quiet. And that's it. And, then, and you know what? And, it, and it's it's a um, it takes time, I'm telling you, it takes practice, it takes time. You know, assuming a sale is not the easiest thing, it's very uncomfortable, you know, because, you know, people don't want to be pushy. You're not being pushy, you're just asserting yourself. And if a guy wants to sell his house, why wouldn't he take an appointment with an agent who works for a real estate company with 100 agents, who has, you know, dominating the 
you know, the buyer's pool because they've been working on this for years and not just a few weeks like the homeowner. You understand? So like, um, you want to tell them like, look, you put a uh, for sale by owner sign in your home, you got one sign. Like Tom says, we have signs all over New Jersey. We've got buyers coming in left and right. Wouldn't you want to have access to all our buyers? You know, it's just a simple question you can ask. So when you rewind this video and you watch it later, you're going to be able to get a lot of good pointers out of it. You put together your dialogue, you think works for you. And now I want to meet with you again and then try a first of all owner um, uh, session again. I think it's good for you to, you know, review it over the weekend, practice, practice, practice. And then Monday we could review it again and then you can get on the phones and see how it works. In real life, you're going to get a lot of things like coming out of left field. You're going to get like weird things that people are going to say. You know, they're going to ask you things that you're going to crack up. They're going to ask you things that like, you know, what's wrong with this guy? You know, like maybe I don't want to work with him. And that's another thing. You don't have to work with everybody. If they're really other, you know, unreasonable. Sometimes for sale by owners, it's not that they want to save the commission. It's that they're extra greedy, which means that not only do they want to save the commission, but they want to overprice it by like fifty or $100,000. So those people are going to be very difficult. You know, and then you have to try to reason with them. And if they don't want to listen to reason, then you should just let them go because it's going to be incredibly frustrating working with them. If the person is right on the money or a little bit over, then they need guidance. You know, they need a little help and they need help with marketing, they need all those things. You know, so um, I, I would, uh, I would uh, over the weekend, I would come, I would figure out what are the benefits of working with Alejandro and Culture Estate. Write them down, figure out what they are, memorize them, and also figure out why Alejandro, why is, what's special about you. Figure out what's special about you that you can say, you know, I know you're meeting with three agents, but let me be the first one and I'll tell you why you have to meet with anyone else after that. Like, be very confident in yourself. And uh, when you're done with the, when you're done with the uh, meeting, you said, you tell me, did I, did I tell you everything that you wanted, that you expected to hear? Yes, you did. Have I earned your business? Uh, I don't know, Alejandro, I don't know. Listen, is there anything else that I could have said or could have done something your business? And then put them on the spot. Make them uncomfortable. And then when they say, you know what, you're a great guy, I think we'd love to work with you. Good, I'll call the other two agents that you're coming over and let them know you get the loser. You know, something very confident like that because people love that. People know that when they give you their most prized possession, that they're not giving it to someone who's a pushover. They're giving it to someone who's strong, someone who can deliver. So that's what you're going to have to get out of it. So let's run it back one more time. I'll be the seller. I'm going to give you some weird stuff. And then let's see what um, we can do. Yeah, same. Okay, so I'll be answering the phone. So, hello? Hi, Louis. Yes, this is Louis. I can help you. Hey, Louis. This is Alejandra from mm -hmm. Culture State. And don't worry, I'm not trying to force you to listen with me. I know you had probably like 10 calls today so far. <laughs> How's it been? <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah, about 10 calls. And, about they're, 10 and calls. they're all real estate agents, none of them are home, home buyers. So I'm getting pretty frustrated. Yeah, you know, that's exactly what happens when you do for sale by owner. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. you know, I do understand that you probably want to save some money yeah. and like. You know, I completely understand, but that's exactly what happens when you do um, a for sale by owner. About maybe seven percent of the people that are actually, um, you know, in the market. No, I actually said that. Mm -hmm. um, Ninety-three percent of the people that are actually looking for a property out there, they're working with agents. Oh, yeah. So when you market out there as a for sale by owner, you're only getting about seven percent of the um, exposure. Mm -hmm to home buyers. So this is why, you know, a lot of like 93% of the people that are buying homes, like they really buy it with an agent. And I know that you want to try it, you know, um, a different approach with selling. What what happened with the other, I, I see that you had it before and um, listed with an agent. What happened with that? Uh, well, it was listed with someone before. It was a friend of the family. And uh, I think the guy uh, thought he was doing me a favor. You know, and I uh, just never really did anything he was supposed to. I didn't see any open houses. There was really any, hardly any marketing. And uh, but I understand what you're saying. But I have the home listed on Zillow. I mean, isn't that the first place the buyers go to look for homes anyway? Not really, to be honest. Um, I think Zillow is not even on the top ten, if I if I'm not mistaken. Um, a lot of people nowadays they actually go to social media to look mm -hmm. for homes. Believe it or not, mm -hmm. um, we are actually one of the highest or number one um company sure. my team and i um and social media advertising mm -hmm. so this is how we get a lot of the clients and a lot of the homes sold mm -hmm. um so this is why you know i think um it's easier to go with an agent um stop right there when you're throwing out statistics like that that you're not sure of i wouldn't say it because first of all like we don't know if zillow is one of the top 10 or not of um, places where people go to look for homes and it probably is. It's probably number one or three. Who knows, right? In that in that category, 
what we could say is, Mr. Mr. Homestead, because you never want to disagree with your client. You always want to make them seem like they're very intelligent. So isn't that where people go to buy homes? If the guy said to me, is that where everybody starts their search? You know, you're absolutely right. You know, that is where people start their search. <clears throat> but you got to remember that 93% of those people that are looking for the home are with an agent. So when they tell their agent about this home, do you really think that agent is going to want to go show them that property? They'll probably talk them out of it because when it's a for sale by owner, normally what happens is there's a very little commission of any being paid out to an agent. And number two, they're worried that they might lose their client to you because they might go around their back. So they might you might circumvent you and, and then there's no commission. So it's a very scary thing for a real estate agent to uh, take a chance on a for sale by owner. Wouldn't you understand uh, that that could happen? Don't you think that's a reasonable thing? You know, I never thought of it that way. And then the person might say, you know, so, you know, why, you know, but I'm, I'm, I'm offering, I'll, you know, I'll put it in writing. I'll offer a 2 to 3% commission. That's understandable, Mr. Seller, but, you know, like the, the agents won't even take the time to look that far and to look into it that much. They would rather just go with the secure thing, which is a home money in the list that is already there. And, you know, the home, exactly. It's already negotiated, it's on paper, it's protected. So, you know, um, agents don't get paid by the hour, Mr. Seller. I mean, I think you can understand that. And uh, you know every little bit you know helps, so they're not really out there to take chances on their commission. And I think you can appreciate that. So the guy would say, you know what? I, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. So, but you know what? Can I just pay? Um, and this is where I'm going to pick up again on the seller, the other agent again. Can I just pay one of these rental brokers like three hundred dollars to list my property on the MLS? I could do that too. Well, <laughs> do you know about that? No. Okay. <laughs> well, there's services out there that people can pay <clears throat> to brokers. And they get no representation. It's a limited service agreement. And all they do is they list the property on the MLS for them. And they walk away. They don't take appointments. They don't go to CO inspections. They don't do anything. Um, they get their fee up front, 300 bucks, whatever it is, 500 bucks in places. Uh, so what that does, obviously, is it goes into the brokers and there's no representation. So no commission. there's no commission for that agent, only commission for the other agencies. Okay? Because the other agencies obviously have to get something. So. You're already paying 2.5% to the other brokerage. You're paying $300 for no representation, right? Why don't you just think about this, right? You have no representation, no guidance, no marketing, right, besides the MLS. Don't you understand that a lot of homes nowadays, you know, they, uh, they get looked at online? Because where are most people looking nowadays? Like, how many hours a day do your kids or your, you know, colleagues or your friends in church or wherever, how many hours a day do you think they spend watching television, you know? I don't know, maybe an hour or two. Right. How many times a day do you think they check their phone? Do you know that? <laughs> the statistic is that people check their, their phone roughly about 93 times a day. And if they're always checking their phone, guess what the number one or two apps are? Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> exactly. So if they're not, if they don't have a presence there, your home doesn't have a presence there, chances are your home is not getting marketed to their its capacity. So whenever someone throws something at me that they think, oh, this is the holy grail, this is the solution, you agree with them, yes, correct. But then you give them an alternative that yes, you're correct. But wouldn't you like this on top of that? And wouldn't you like an extra, you know, ten percent in your pocket at the closing table? And Tom says, wouldn't you like more money at your closing table? I mean, in your pocket at the closing table? Well, yes, everyone would. Nobody's, it's, a, it's a, you know, it, it's 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 a question that no one's going to answer no to. So if yes is the answer to you wanting to put more money in your pocket at the closing, I'll be at your home this weekend to show you how. Great, that's it. You know, all right, awesome. What time? Well. I don't know, I'm kind of busy on Saturday. I think I could fit you in between 12 and 2. Is that okay? Yeah, you know, I guess that makes sense. You know, so always make sure that your day is not completely open. Like, I'm free all week and all day. <laughs> like, no, make, make sure that you understand that you're a little busy too. You know, your your appointment with them is actually a benefit to them. And that if it doesn't work out, it's okay. There's no love lost. So just coming over to educate. You. All right. So let's run it back halfway through. Uh, I'd like to, I like, you know, I'd like to know more about you know how you work, but can I just pay an agent, a broker, three hundred to five hundred dollars, uh, and just have them put my home on MLS and save myself, you know, a whole lot of money? Well, you could if you want to, mm -hmm. but um, what if I tell you that by listing, I know that when you pay them, they, you get no representation. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna market the property, which is really how the, the property is gonna sell. Mm -hmm. Um, and you have to pay the other agent, I'm sure, two and a half percent, whatever you're agreeing to. Yeah. So, if I tell you that by um, us coming over mm -hmm. to you and just talking to you, like help you out, and, and you know maybe bring you a few more websites that you could actually list on, mm -hmm. um, 
and then just give us the opportunity to you know see what the benefits are to sure. listen with us instead of just you know being out there um i actually do have um some time tomorrow mm -hmm. like between 12 and 2 what works for you uh okay i think that i can make that work let me just check with my wife and i'll give you a call back um do you want to bother your wife about this it only going to be like 15 minutes um, yeah, because she owns the house, so we have to bother her. That's her, that's her job, too. What time is she there? I'm not sure I have to call her. Is this the best number to reach you? This is the best number to reach me, yes. Right, so I'll give you a call back in a few minutes. Okay. So when somebody hits me with the wife line or husband yeah. line, you know, what I say is, listen, you don't even have to bother them at this moment because it's preliminary. I'm just coming over to take a quick look at the home. If you want, we can set up a second appointment later on with them. So whether your, your wife or is, is available or not, it would be great for, them, for both of you guys to be there. This is honestly the only time I have available tomorrow. So, you know, for, you know, just for the um, uh, ability to get over there and kind of like give you guys a more immediate answer, uh, I'll just stop by. And if she's there, awesome. If not, we'll set up a second meeting. Is that okay? Good. All right. Okay. So then we'll meet, you know, tomorrow at 12, whatever the case is or whatever, however you do it. Um, because you'll never get that call back. Yeah. You'll never get it. It's not going to happen. And if you follow up with them, like, oh, yeah, I spoke to my wife, she says no. You know, like, if you catch them on the phone. So you kind of, while you have them, while they're warm, just assume the sale, come over. After you show them what you have to show them, they're going to either A, tell you, yes, let's do it, or I'm still not so, I don't want to work with an agent yet. And that's okay. You could always follow up with them later, follow up with them later. At least they know your face and you feel there's some connection there because you guys have not, you know, maybe you tell them a little bit about your personal life, about your family, you leave them with your resume, you leave them with all these things. Yeah. And then there's that connection there. Yeah, exactly. Because the whole key is getting in the door. Once you get in the door, your, your chances increase tremendously, you know, so that's it. So hopefully uh, you got a lot out of this training. Uh, let's let's watch it as many times as you have to. Get the little nuggets of, you know, of uh, gold that you think are good for you. Put them into, you know, write down the questions that were comfortable, the good things, put them into, into some kind of a, a format where you can replay it and replay it and play it, and then just go from there. I mean, for sale by owners, they're no different than anyone else. It's just kind of a different talking points. But then everything else is comes down to statistics everything else comes down to numbers your confidence your clothes you know that's it, all it is it's just a combination of those so hopefully you um you'll, you'll master that i know you will so um, guys uh for those of you who don't know alejandra she is uh my rookie of the year 2018 she is um uh, she's amazing she's trying to do a tremendous thing she's been on a path of self-improvement and just mastering her skills as a real estate agent so if you haven't done so yet, please follow her. And uh, Alejandra, what is your handle on Instagram and Facebook? Alejandra know? loves real estate. Alejandra loves real estate. That's <laughs> awesome. So you know your heart's in the right place. So thank you guys for watching. If you feel this was great, please share it, comment, uh, like it, whatever you got to do. Uh, follow us across all our social media channels at Culture Estate. Thanks, guys, and have a great day. Enjoy your weekend. Bye. Bye. Uh.